if I had a man, I don't think I'd be able to keep it a secret because I would have to tell y'all how much he's getting on my nerves. Hello, salam alaikum. It's your girl Nadir P, AKA Big Body Naughty, and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're a returning subscriber, your dedication is unmatched. So for today's video, as you can see, I have on red, I have on my love shirt because one of my favorite days of the year just passed Valentine's Day. I'm low key a simp. I love love. I love all the various types of love. And as a single young black Muslim woman with visibility, that's an influencer, that's a stand up comedian, that's a topic that comes up often. Uh, my followers are always asking me about it. I make a lot of jokes about it, different things like that. So, in honor of this amazing day. I took some questions on my Instagram. If you do not follow me on Instagram, you should be. So um, I basically asked you guys to ask me any questions pertaining to dating as a young black Muslim woman, dating as an influencer, dating, courting, as a stand-up comedian, as somebody with visibility, all that stuff. And you guys took it serious. You guys do not play around. You guys play no games. So we are going to answer these questions. You guys got very personal <laughs> very quickly. So there are some questions that I had to take out, but for the most part, I'm comfortable being open and honest on my platform with you guys about dating and love and, and all of that thing. So let's hop right into that because I don't want this video to be too long and I have a lot of questions to answer. So question number one, what is the worst part of the talking stage? The ghetto person that overthinks a lot I'm also a person that's very extra so for me it's like it's kind of fun but the talking stage is not really fun for me because as soon as and this is not even just romantically like friendship wise everything as soon as I determine that you're a nice person that you're a likable person I'm ready to start tricking off you like anything you want I want to buy it I'm ready to spoil you I'm ready to give you everything that your heart desires but it's hard to do that in a talking stage because it's like okay do we like talk or do we like talk you know so that that that's difficult that's annoying that's too much do you have a dating horror story I do not have a dating horror story but we weren't even really dating I was like talking to this guy and at this point we had only been talking for two weeks and he called me and like in all honesty was like you think you can come down to the bank and co-sign a loan for me? Huh? What? And I would like to say that he was joking but he was being dead serious like he was 100% he was not joking around. He was being so serious. So that that's a horror story that I try my best to forget. There were a lot of questions about this. Have you ever been engaged or almost engaged? Complete transparency. I was in a long-term relationship for two years and we had every intention of getting married. So it's like, in my mind, like to me and him, we were engaged, but to my family, we were not. So that's like yes and no. So boom, bam, you wanted to know, there's the truth. As you can see, that did not work out. And that's probably all that I'm ever going to say about that. Do not expect any type of story time or anything like that because it's really not important. And also that's messy. Like I feel like it would be different if we were like in the public eye, if like y'all knew who he was and everything, but it happened, it's over. We've both moved on, so. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, have you ever dated someone your family or friends didn't care for? This same relationship that I just mentioned, my family did not care for him. Uh, my friends were cool with him, but my family did not care for him. Have you ever been heartbroken? I have been heartbroken. Again, the same situation I just told you guys about was heartbreaking. So yes. What's the biggest red flag you've seen dating as a black Muslim woman? There are so many red flags. But I think the biggest one is meeting so many people who just wanna have sex and are not adult or mature enough to admit that they just wanna have sex. So they're predators. <laughs> like they like to be predatory to get you to have sex with them. And then as soon as they see that you're not going for it, all the stuff that they said goes out the window. Well, everything that they lied about goes out the window. 
Do you have concerns your significant other will have issues with your fame? That is a great question because that's definitely a difficulty I've faced in the dating courting process as a person that has visibility, as a person that's an influencer, as a person that has a large following. It's not really something that I'm worried about because I'm confident that I'm going to choose a person that does not have an issue with that, that does not see an issue with that. So. I don't have any concerns, I'm not worried about it, but it is, it can be a bit of an obstacle in the process of getting to know somebody, but it's something that I'm always very forward, very upfront about because it's not easy. Um, especially, it would be something if I was like just an influencer, but I'm a stand-up comedian. And, well, I don't know, with COVID and everything, but usually I'm on the road, I'm traveling a lot, I know a lot of people. Um, I'm talking to and communicating with a lot of men. So it's definitely something that's going to require that person to be secure in his manhood and secure in his personhood in order for it to be cohesive. Because I don't really feel like there's anything that I can do to make you more comfortable because it is what it is. Someone said, okay girl, so are you seeing somebody like on a real tee though? How do you investigate people properly, like make sure they're safe and trustworthy? I think there's only but so much that you can do in investigating a person, but from an Islamic perspective, we know that you are allowed and encouraged to ask the community about a person that you are interested in for marriage. And I think more people should take advantage of that. Like if I'm talking to a man, I'm hitting up other women like, hey, do you know so-and-so? What can you tell me about his character, about his past relationships, about the type of person that he is? But I also think it's especially important if you're talking to a man, you need to be asking women about him. Because the fact of the matter is, a man is going to show a different side of himself to other men. But I always say, if you really wanna know a man, if you really wanna know about a man, ask a woman. Because I feel like a woman is going to know the truth, she's going to have the tea. Point blank, period. Are men overly familiar because they feel like they know you from your public image? Yes, yes, and yes. I have encountered that so many times where it's like, this is our first time talking and men are like, hey, what's up, Nadi? What's up, Dara? No, ma'am. Don't call me by nickname, sir, you don't know me. I am Sister Nadira until we get to a stage where we actually know each other. How do you set the line between being picky and settling? Um, I think that requires a lot of introspective work. You should definitely be doing the work to figure out what do you want, what do you need, what can you compromise on, and what are non-negotiables. I think that will, uh, that will let you know what settling is or what being picky is. Also unpacking what you define as settling and what you define as being picky. Because I feel like a lot of time for women, for black women especially, having any type of standard at all is automatically seen as, oh, you're just being picky. And it's like, no, I just know what I want. I know what I need. I know what I like. And that's what I want. And there's nothing wrong with that. Have you ever dated, considered dating a non-Muslim man? No. Ever face unrequited love and how did you deal with it? I cannot say I have ever faced unrequited love. Sorry. Have you used Muslim dating apps? Do you think they are helpful or not? First of all, I have videos. I'll insert the card somewhere of me trying out Muslim dating apps. I feel like they are useful depending on the type of person that you are, depending on the type of person that you're looking for. But I will say with Muslim dating apps, you have to have time. You have to be, if you are that committed to getting married, you have to be willing to carve out a lot of time to dedicate to reading up on people, swiping on people, talking on these apps, all of that. But I know some people that have been very successful in it. It did not work out for me, whether the, uh, the review that I did in the video or outside of that I was on the apps and it just wasn't my thing, but it's worked out for some people. Do you date or marry a Somali? I feel like she put the banana there <laughs> because of the bananas and the rice. I have never dated a Somali, but it's something that I, would, I think I would be open to. How do you ensure that your values are aligned aside from general religion, of course? Again, back to the introspective work of deciding what you want, what you need, but some great advice that a, a Muslim woman gave to me, a black Muslim woman gave to me, is when you're deciding what you want or what you need or what you like, Start with the things that you like about yourself. And I'm a person that believes, I don't believe in opposites attract. That's not my thing. 
because I feel like opposites have chemistry and we attract and it's like strong and it's like ooh you know it's it's so much fun it's so adventurous but when it's time to start living life okay when we're not in love right now we're making real life decisions about our relationship about each other about our children about our family nobody wants to be with their total opposite unless you do but let me say i do not want to be with my total opposite salam how many relationships have you had you in my business don't do that how many is too many this is what i mean by y'all getting really personal i've only been in one and that was the man that i tried to marry um how many is too many i don't believe that there's a such thing as too many relationships you have as many as you want as many as, you, as many as you like as many as you need until you decide that this is the one or until you no longer want to be in relationships what would and wouldn't you be willing to compromise with your partner without getting like too personal i would not be able to compromise having a partner that is a practicing muslim i think for wood i would be willing to compromise on profession like i've always said that i don't want somebody that's an influencer like me or somebody that spends a lot of time traveling for work like me but i would i i, I would be able to if you're great enough if you're nice enough we could do that that ain't no problem that ain't no problem. What is your definition of court? What boundaries do you set? How long should the talking stage last? So as you can see, I'm not one of those Muslims that say, oh, we don't date. We court. Courting is a type of dating. Point blank period. So I don't know what the definition of court is. I think it's the same thing as dating. It's just that Muslims have a different definition of what dating is. What boundaries do you set? I don't, I don't want to say it's kind of obvious, but I personally have uh, physical boundaries. So no kissing, no premarital sex, we're not going to live together, all of that. Uh, but I feel like that's a given. How long should the talking stage last until both parties decide that they're ready for something more? Or until one or both parties decide that they don't want to have anything more? Are you dating now? It's corona though. So no, I'm not dating. How do you overcome shyness when speaking to guys? I don't necessarily feel like shyness is a bad thing unless it's like debilitating and it's keeping you from having real and crucial conversations. But I feel like that is something that you just have to practice at. Like it's, it's not something where I don't feel like you can read a book or like read a pamphlet or listen to a podcast and all of a sudden the shyness is gonna go away. It's just something that you have to keep practicing at and keep in mind that you're prioritizing. So it's like, are you gonna hold on to that shyness or are you gonna make sure that you're having crucial conversations? How do you think dating should be done nowadays? Cause sis, the old process doesn't work. I will be honest, the old process, the very antiquated process, the very cultural process, because I don't think that it has anything to do with Islam, of every single time we talk, there has to be a maham around, and you know, we're not having this conversation until after marriage, we're not having that conversation or that conversation. It's not very useful. In many cases, it has proven itself to be faulty and unreliable. So I think now there should be as much alone time and as much real and raw conversation as possible. And when I say alone time, that does not mean that y'all are going away to a five-star resort and getting a hotel room and all of that. But that means when it's time to have real conversations, I'm not gonna have those real conversations with you in front of our families, in front of our parents. So it's like, even if, okay, cool. You wanna have a chaperone there, cool. Your dad comes out to have tea with you guys. Your dad is sitting over in another section and then you and him are sitting here. You guys are talking, you guys are chatting it up. You guys are talking about the things that actually matter. Thoughts on interracial marriage and if you would personally do it. Um, interracial marriage is fine. I personally have no interest. This is only for Africans. I am very much so committed and I very much so desire to exclusively be with a black man. How important is appearance, physical attraction when courting someone? Um, it's important. Let's say that. It's very important. But I am more so comfortable with anybody that is comfortable with how they look. So if you're comfortable with how you look, I'm comfortable with how you look. Would you have you dated someone you did not find physically attractive? I have not. But again, how I see physical attraction is different, I guess. What do you think about brothers saying it's their right to have more than one wife? Islamically, men can have more than one wife. 
However, nowhere Islamically does it say that women are obligated to be in polygamous relationships. Nowhere does it say that you are allowed to just have multiple wives and keep it a secret. And nowhere does it say that anybody is forced to stay in an unhappy relationship. So yes, he can have as many wives as he'd like. Those wives have a right to not want to be a part of that relationship and to get a divorce based upon the fact that they do not want to be with someone that has multiple wives. Period. Do you feel romance is boundless or a social norm? Romance is boundless. How do you meet guys in general if you do not have any male relatives that can introduce you to men? Social media? I highly suggest to women a lot, a lot of times you can meet some really great men through other women. So it's like you may not have any male relatives, but let's say you have a friend and she has male relatives. Maybe you might be interested in one of her relatives or if your friend is married, okay, her husband might know people her husband might have male relatives. You know, it's plenty of ways. How to be happily single whilst everyone is married as I'm almost 30? Well, that depends on, do you also want to be married? Because that's what it sounds like. It sounds like you're saying that you wanna just be happy single, but it also sounds like you're desiring to also be married. So if you're not desiring to be married, there are plenty of ways to be happy. There are plenty of things to do. Marriage is not the end or the beginning of your life. But also be honest, if you do wanna be married, that may be something that you might wanna turn your focus towards and don't fight the feeling. Thoughts on over-sexualization of black women and how that affects black Muslim women. I think when it comes to like dating and marriage and all of that, for black women, but for darker skinned black women especially, it's so annoying to think that someone is interested or for someone themselves to genuinely think that they're interested in you when really they just wanna have sex and they're fetishizing you. I think it's no easier um, for black Muslim women. Like I do not feel like the hijab affects that at all. If anything, I feel like to a certain degree, it makes it worse. Because then it's like, ooh, like now I wanna see what's under there. It's just nasty. All around, it's, it's just disgusting. And it makes finding real connections, finding real romantic connections difficult, if I'm being honest. What do you consider halal dating? I don't even know what that means. How do you go about dating when it's not a thing in your household? Be as honest and transparent with your family as you can and let them know that it's time. <laughs> It's time that you want to start looking around and you want to do it in a way that has your best interest at the forefront and your best interest is getting to know this person as much as possible, having different experiences and outings and different things like that. And do your thing, girl. What's the hardest part about dating as an influencer? Number one, it's almost impossible for me to shoot my shot because of I don't want it to like blow back up in my face and people be like, ooh, Nadir P from Instagram was trying to talk to me, da, da, da. So that's hard. But it's also hard that people have all of these, not people, men, have these preconceived notions about me and who I am and what I am. And that spills over into, instead of them just trying to get to know me, they just, be weird like they just be acting weird and I just be like ew <laughs> I don't like that or it's like they have this like really like romanticized view of who I am and it's like ew you're not even taking the proper time to get to know me or which I feel like this is the worst one there are a lot of men who are obsessed with humbling women these men are like my biggest fans. They love me so much that it disgusts them. So they feel like they're going to marry me and kind of like take me out the game. So they really just want to be with me. So then after that, they could tell me that I can't do comedy anymore. I need to get off Instagram. I have to wear niqab. I can't make jokes. I can't do this. I can't do that. It's sick. It's disgusting. And I want no parts of it. I think she said if you were dating, and you start liking another person because your current boyfriend isn't acting the same way that he used to act. I feel like if you created the time and space and energy to start, to be able to start liking somebody else while you're currently in a relationship, that relationship is probably over anyway. So you should just end it, but don't cheat. Even though it kind of seems like you're already cheating, but you should just end this current relationship and move on. Are you a Haitian Muslim? Yes. And when do you plan on getting married? It's not my plans. It's God's plan. Okay, ask Allah when I'm getting married. Don't ask me because this is not, this is not my time. I want God's time. 
These are God's plans, okay? What would be the best date for you? Things to do or places to go? Ah! This is such a beautiful question. I like fun dates, like really, really fun. Like we're just having a blast. I like dates where I can't bring a purse because everything has to go in my pocket because we're about to start having so much fun. And I also like dates that are all day. Like, oh, I love that. So ideally, meet up in the morning, right? Go for a walk. After our walk, we end up going to breakfast. After breakfast, we go change clothes, maybe go see a movie. From the movie, we either go to an arcade or we go go-karting. From go-karting, we go have lunch. After lunch, what are we doing after lunch? After lunch, go somewhere else, we go to a live show, preferably a comedy show because ha ha, I like to laugh. Or we can go to like, I don't know, them little like Cirque du Soleil shows or like some type of like dancing performance or theater, live theater, yes, right? Then after the live theater, we go get a snack, like a crepe or like a cinnamon pretzel or something like that. And then we go to dinner. And then after dinner, we go take a nap, right? Not together because we're not married. Astaghfirullah. Okay? Go take a nap. Then wake up at like, I don't know, randomly like one or two o'clock in the morning. Then we go get dessert. And then we go watch a movie. And that's it. Perfect date. Perfect date. I'm, I'm sold. I'm sold. We're together. Who is your celebrity crush? Stormzy from the UK. What are the qualities you are looking for? Be specific. Let me give you three qualities that I'm looking for. Someone who is kind hearted, someone who is charitable, and someone who is emotionally intelligent. How to know if someone's genuinely interested in you? They'll show it. I feel like specifically with men, you can tell if a man is genuinely interested because they're consistent. When a man wants something, he's gonna make it happen. He's gonna pursue it. He's gonna be consistent. Do you feel like you're looking for different qualities than people in the mainstream are? No. I feel like that idea of like, ooh, I'm looking for something else. I don't want regular. We all just want love. We all just want safety. We all just want commitment. We all just want security we all just want consistency we all want reassurance so no i don't think any of us are really looking for anything different what do you do when you're seriously crushing a guy like you just see him and go nuts block him stay away from that man that is the devil do you believe in shooting your shot absolutely i am a hundred percent for women shooting their shot that goes with the next question how do you shoot your shot okay let me give you the rundown because i have a whole formula for this try it and prove it so this formula usually works if you're shooting your shot via social media, but I'm sure it'll work in person. You just have to tweak a couple things. So let's say you, you see this guy, he's mad cute, whatever. Just for the sake of being sure this is a person you even wanna shoot your shot at, observe him for at the very least three to five days. Okay, three to five days. Watch his stories, watch his posts, look at his comments, see what he likes, see what he's into three to five days after you find a point of interest within that three to five days message him about it okay so let's say he likes fishing okay message him be like hey I saw that you like fishing I just want to know what fishing rod would you suggest right so when he hits you back he's like hey I suggest da -da 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 -da. say okay thanks it's my first time fishing da -da -da. so it can go one or two ways he can either Continue the conversation and it can naturally flow into something else or he's just gonna end the conversation there If he ends the conversation there Give it a couple days then message him and say hey read a, read a lot about the rod Can't wait to get it can't wait to dry it out. Thanks so much for your suggestion now After you do that if he replies and continues the conversation good if he cuts it off right there Don't talk to that man now. This is not necessarily lying because if y'all do get together, you will be into fishing. <laughs> you have to show men that you're paying attention, that you're watching, and that you care. They go for it every time. They go for it every single time. Men are so easy. It's almost disgusting. It's almost disgusting. You don't have to put in a lot of work. You don't have to put in a lot of time. It's nothing. It's almost too easy. Do you have to involve your parents too from the beginning, both the man and the woman? Whatever you're comfortable with. You can. I am the type of person where 
I'm not involving my parents until I know that I really like you. Mainly because I don't want to waste my family's time in talking to this man that I'm not even interested in. Do you believe in racial preference or having a type? I do believe in racial preference because I have a racial preference. When it comes to having a type, that's fine, but it's important to unpack why you have that type because that's not something that we are innately born with. Like nobody is like, nobody is born like, mm, you're not gonna meet a baby that's like, oh, I just prefer my lighter skin parent to my darker skin one. It's just not gonna happen. How do you draw religious boundaries when romantically involved? I believe in being very explicit in that. So as soon as you guys start talking, because there are certain people that cross those religious boundaries and that are comfortable with that to each his own. But I would verbally say, I'm comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with this. I'm uncomfortable with that. I'm comfortable with this. Having that clear communication so they can never say they didn't know. Would you date a guy who is in a why, why or why not? Uh, yeah, I would. Why? Because it's a Muslim man, so I don't see why not. Ooh, she said, what's the first green flag for you? A rich nigga, a figure, that's my type. Conversation. Like that first conversation is going to have me interested. Um, looks are not enough because looks, I'll, you know, look at you two, three times and then I'm good. But when we have that initial conversation, that's going to let me know if it's a green flag or a red one. What type of men are showing interest? I mean, looks, income, personality wise, no man that I'm interested in. <laughs> Do you think a mahram is optional? Also, what could, who could be your mahram? I don't know who could be your mahram from an Islamic standpoint. I'm not really too sure. I'm not sure enough to speak on it. When we have a hadith about men and women not being alone, I think we have to ask ourselves, what is the real definition or the Islamic definition of what it means to be alone? Because if we're going out to dinner, we're not alone. So when you say no man and woman could be alone, does that necessarily mean my father or my brother or somebody needs to be here? I think that's, uh, that's worth looking into. Also, people like to use and abuse the mahram thing. The fact of the matter is, if I want to have any type of con physical contact or intercourse with this person, there is no father figure, uncle figure, brother or anything that can stop that. So don't blame not having a mahram. Like you literally need a supervisor in order for you not to fornicate at your big age. How do you do it? Cause I'm done. I don't. I don't, I don't, I cannot. But yes, those are all the questions that we have for today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, I'm praying that you all are surrounded with a love that is a constant reminder of all the great things in this world, with a secure love, a safe love, a healthy love, a, um, a love that is ever growing, evolving and changing, and a love that is fulfilling. I pray that for all of you. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another video. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Bye. Assalamu alaikum.